Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Today I'm going to show you the best ice and snow traction for your shoes that's low profile, inexpensive, and extremely versatile. I'm going to show you the lowest profile, least expensive, lowest effort possible ice traction for your shoes for your winter activities and travel. But before I do that, if you wouldn't mind, just hit the subscribe button to support my channel to keep bringing you this information. And also, please leave me a comment below and let me know how I'm doing and give me some more ideas for videos that I can do for you. Thank you very much. So let's get right down to it. Today, I'm having to change out the screws in my shoes. Now, this might look like something's gone horribly wrong. Aaron, what has happened to your shoes and what are all these shiny dots on here? Well, that's the thing. I go out, I train a lot, I tow tires, and it, it really tears up my shoes, okay? So I have this technique. I've used this for ice climbing, or not climbing, but ice walking, jogging on glare ice. I'll put a link to the other video that I did some time ago to show you how well this technique works. In fact, if you have a complete glary sheet of ice and you're walking along, the only thing that's gonna happen is Whoa! wham! Unlike microspikes and crampons and yak tracks and all that other stuff, which add a lot of bulk to your shoes, my technique adds like nothing, maybe two millimeters to your shoes. So essentially it's just like walking like normal. So how do you do this? Well, you need a drill and with a socket driver. And this is a, this is my one quarter socket driver. And then you need some screws and not just any particular screws. I'll put a link below to Amazon, but the number six, Number six, hex head with three eights. You can get a number eight if you want something bigger, but number six works just fine. And this is literally all you need. Now, I've already taken out a bunch of the screws out of this shoe, and you can see all the holes in there. And let me show you what they look like after a season of working out here, so. Let me show you there. So you can see that the head has gotten pretty worn down. Let me find one that's really chewed up. Let's see, no, some of them are good. That one's pretty chewed up and you can see that. So what happens is, <laughs> I mean, literally as you walk along on the concrete and the ice and the asphalt and whatever else in the winter, these screw heads naturally abrade down and then at the end of the year or next year when you remember it, you just take them out and you put in some new ones. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'll show you the process of me taking them out. And you want a variable speed drill. This is important. You don't want a fixed speed drill. I, I've got a quarter drill, it's inexpensive, but you need to be able to control the speed of the drill. Otherwise, this is really hard to do. So let me cut to the part where I'm going to unscrew and drop all the screws and then I'll show you how to put them back in and tell you how many to put in. Okay, so here's my removal system from last season's screws and I don't get, let them get down to where I can't get them off. I mean, they, these are pretty chewed down. You can see the scuff marks on the steel here and you might say, geez, that's a lot of screws. Well, I'll tell you a minute, you can see where I run here and. There's not much left of that, but still my nut driver can totally get them out. Don't try and use a flat head that's miserable. You're going to want some sort of power tool because this does take some time. Okay. And I'll fast forward this part, I think. And there you go, all screws removed. Now you might be wondering why I put so many screws in here. Well, I did a few experiments. I saw other people 
uh, runners who do trail running, and they'll, they'll maybe put five or six or eight. And I'm telling you, based on experience, on glare ice, five, six, eight, ten, not enough. You really want about 20, 21 screws all across the shoe lugs on your shoe. And these are trail runners, A6. I'll, uh, I'll put a link below. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I remember what the model, the T2E3N. They've got a sexier model name. But the reason you put this many screws in here is because depending on where your contact point is and where the ice is, and knowing that ice and snow, of course, aren't smooth, you might put a few screws, but they're not going to grab enough. So this technique of putting 20 plus screws in the bottom of your shoe will ensure that you've got grip. Now, it's not going to be like crampon grip on glare ice where you're stepping and you're stopping. This still allows, allows some slide, but it's controlled slide. So you're not walking along and you stumble and maybe you stab your leg. Now, micro spikes are arguably better simply because you can take them on, put them off, or t take them off, put them on, um, and those are pretty good. They are, of course, much more expensive. I'll put a link below. I would say those are the most versatile of all of the different uh, options like Yak Tracks. I've used Yak Tracks. Uh, those are super popular too. I'll put a link below to check those out. I've converted to micro spikes because those are much more of a crampon style. But for the lowest profile running around, I mean, I, I can go at any time. If I want to tow tires on the street in the middle of summer and not tear up the bottom of my shoes, I just tear up all of these screws. As you can see here, I don't care. And I just get some more screws. So the technique to putting these in, this is the key because you think, oh, it's, gonna, it's going to rip through the foam. It's going to tear up my shoes. Uh, I, I'm going to get stabbed in the bottom of my feet. So no, this is the key is the number six or the number eight. I like number six heads a bit better uh, just because they're finer points. The number eights are a little bit bigger. The number six, three eighths are the best size because this three eighths body, the shank of the screw does not go through the rubber. In fact, not even close. And let me show you, even on the front of your shoe here, and I put this screw here, you can see that screw barely gets through the rubber and just touches the foam. Even way up on the tip of your shoe, not, woo, <laughs> not even close. I mean, it's, it's really surprising. I mean, you could literally use a half inch screw, but I always got a little bit fearful. I mean, I've never had one of these rip out ever. So you can see on the back, of course, a 3 8 nothing to it. So you, if you think you might be a little less confident, you can use a half inch screw, but I wouldn't use anything longer than that simply because it just punches holes that if you step down real hard, I don't think that would go through, but uh, this is all you need. So this is a guarantee. Now, the next question is how far do you screw these down? All right, so here's the key. So what I'm going to do is show you right here. When you put the screw in to your shoe, and these are my preset holes already, you'll see that the head starts going down, right? So the key here is you ever so slowly begin screwing this down until the head just contacts the rubber. You don't want any light visible through this area here at all, so you can't see anything, but you don't want to screw any farther past that. And the reason is because the threads of the screw will start churning up the foam and the rubber in your shoes and it'll start tearing apart. Now, as you can see, my trail shoes are actually pretty old and they barely have some wear marks here. These screws have done an incredible job. So let me show that again. And I'll, uh, I'll start this in here and once I get up to full speed, obviously you're not gonna do this sort of thing, but, or see that, but I will literally. And that's it. I stop the moment the head contacts the rubber and that's as far as you go. So that is a technique. So now I'm gonna show you how long it takes with a drill to put this many screws in here and then I'll talk a little bit about placement and texturing.
And there you have it. I'm fully loaded on this one shoe. All my screws are in place and I'm ready to go for another season. Now this is great for people who do CrossFit who like to tow sleds or tires or anything as well because this prevents your shoes from getting torn up. Because if you're out dragging tires and sleds and whatnot for hours on end, the tread or your shoe of your shoe will get destroyed super quick. But really this is an excellent option for people who live in icy cold areas where you might be walking on anything slick or icy or just about anything, this gets your shoes ready to rock. Now, the choice of the pattern that I made, you'll notice there's nothing up here on the tip because I'm not doing ballet or anything. Mm -hmm. Now what I do is I follow the wear pattern of my shoe. So everybody has a slightly unique wear pattern. My particular pattern is I start on the outer edge I roll through the middle and then I kick off on the inside part of my foot. So that's the wear pattern. So that's where I tend to add a few extra screws. So if, you're, if you've got a place where you almost never step on, don't put too many screws, but you definitely want them balanced all throughout the shoe. Also, don't just put the screws into the foam of your shoe because they will actually tear out. Plus the foam of your shoe is below the level of the tread. So there's no point, those screws won't do anything for you there. So you can see the pattern that I walk on coming in here and then rolling out. I don't know if that's under or over a pronate, but that's how you determine where to add a few extra screws. I recommend at least 20 screws on a shoe, especially if you're a trail runner, somebody who gets out a lot. Uh, the, the, the more screws, arguably the merrier but I think my count was about 20 screws and that gave me incredible traction on the slickest device. I mean, you looked at the ice and it was an inch thick and man, you, you could just slide right across it. But now just know that these shoes are dedicated to this activity. So uh, one of the things is if you get in vehicles or anything and you rub these screws across the paint in the interior of your door, it will tear up your paint. I'm speaking from experience. And also another thing, if you come inside with your shoes and you have a hard tile floor, your regular shoe, of course, will, nothing will happen. But these are ultra slick. So this is the irony on hard tile floors. These are the worst. So that is one thing about the micro spikes is they're much more versatile, but this style is the lowest profile. It's only two millimeters high. It was five bucks for a box of a hundred screws that I'll probably lose this box and have to buy another one next season, but eh, big deal, it's five bucks. Skip one Starbucks and you got this thing. So this is the lowest profile, easiest, cheapest, replaceable method for adding traction to your trail runners when you're out ice walking or anything, you can even put them on your outdoor boots. Just remember if you go into stores or your home or anything and you walk on a surface, especially if it's wood, you will destroy the surface of the wood. It is super slick on tile. This works only on asphalt, concrete, rocks, dirt, and ice and snow. So I hope you found this valuable. Check out the video I mentioned below that shows you just how well these things work. My name is Aaron Lindstout. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video and also subscribe to my channel to support it. And please support me on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.